Sorry, we're live here. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be molding uh, brown wax cylinders. I hope anybody who's watching can hear me. My biggest uh, problem is always that modern technology likes to not work for me. It always takes me about a half an hour to get this ready to go online because this computer, supposed to be a decent one, it's a Lenovo uh, laptop. And it's always a hassle to put online. I have an older... Uh, desktop and that old desktop works just fine it's just that i don't have usb uh things long enough to uh right now i'm checking the temperature we're at 199.3 so is i'm going to unplug it and check the temperature because that's way hotter than we need it it's nice to have it uh basically i call cinch the uh batch at that temperature but what we'll do I have it. I have to now check and see when our temperature is about uh, about seventy five, uh, one hundred and seventy five degrees centigrade, and then we will mold the blank. A lot of people mold at real high temperature, and the really high temperatures uh, in some waxes usually indicate that you have too much lye in your your record. Is the more lye you put in, the higher your melt point is. Not necessarily how much aluminum it is, is in it, but your melt point is determined a lot by how much lye is in the formula. So you have a lot of lye in it. Uh, it raises the melt point a lot and, uh, and the general molding temperature. You got to remember, original brown wax cylinders are molded at, at 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Into the, you know They would run a a course of molds to heat the mold up, you know, to get them to temperature. And then because of the, the there was a revolving table that the molds were on and they would facilitate molding going past this table and a person would fill the mold up and then the next person, they actually kind of sped up the process by actually wrapping rags around, you know, with uh, kind of lukewarm water, wrapping rags around the molds then they had a hook. They, they would uh, basically yank the uh, the outside of the mold off first. And then they would unscrew the center core at, uh, of the record by using buckskin gloves. That's how they originally made the commercial brown wax records. So they molded it, the brown wax at 330 degrees on this revolving table. So one guy pull, pull, poured the wax in the mold. And then, and then another guy wrapped wet rags around the mold. Another guy yanked the outside of the mold off. It basically had this wooden clamp, and it was there was like this hanger that was on the side of the table, and they would yank out the uh, outer tube, and then they would unscrew the uh, the uh, record with buckskin gloves. And that's how they made them back then. That's it that was the commercial process of making the brown wax uh, records in between 1889 and up to whenever they stopped making brown wax. It's probably somewhere actually in the 1910s because they sold brown wax recording blanks for quite a while. If any of you have an exact date, I've looked and I've never found an. I've seen 1912 on some of the uh, black wax blank boxes and the black wax four minute boxes some of the uh, records have ribbed bores and some have spiral bores. And some have writing on them and some are, do not have writing on them. Those boxes, the, at least the ones I have, are usually recycled Edison gold molded boxes for one. And two, they uh, usually, yeah, underneath, the, the label usually falls off because they just kind of, just put a line of glue in, put it around a gold molded box. So most of your four minute uh, recording blanks, uh, the label is about ready to fall off. And there's actually a minty gold molded label or, you know, one of those Edison 
record, red and gold Edison record with a really nice bright white background on it. So that's kind of neat. I'm putting a lot of gloves on right now because we're going to be taking the mold out pretty soon. I got to make sure I have a mandrel on hand and we're going to have to do a lot of watching because this is a new formula. So you just got to watch the wax and the mold carefully uh, when the properties look like it's ready to remove. You see it's not liquid anymore, then it's time to... Uh... Yeah, I see we've got one person. Hello. Matthew Richards, hi. That's good you're watching. Now, we don't know how good things are going to turn out because this is a different type of batch that I really don't know anything about yet. So this is a test. So we're seeing how this turns out. So uh, we're in my kitchen here making brown wax. This is the thermometer I'm using. So we're seeing where I'm, I'm at. I actually have unplugged the wax crucible because it got up to almost 200 degrees centigrade, which is really, really hot. And we don't need it that hot to mold blanks. And the nice thing is it's placid right now. And that's good. I'm just trying to find out what temperature it is. It's always best to let this little uh, thing dangle in there. This is a Lutron... Uh, uh, thermometer and uh, boy is it kind of slow going up. oh there we go see it'll just kind of lag there for a little bit and then all of a sudden it'll start going up we're still at like 194 degrees which is really 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 hot yet and I have it unplugged so we want to get it down to around 170 degrees centigrade well, 170 175 degrees centigrade you gotta remember that in the old days they did actually mold the commercial records at 330 degrees fahrenheit which is pretty low uh by most maker standards i know the fellow in england he molds his at 180 uh centigrade uh we have uh i'm gonna make the picture a little different so we could see more of it so we have our wax crucible and uh everything happening here i'm gonna back this up so you could see the whole of our molding system there as we'll be using that whole area i'll move the computer over a little bit and we make i'm making this in my kitchen and boy, is it, it was already 100, it got up to 100 degrees outside already today. It's not that hot now. It says it's 81 in here right now, according to the computer. So, uh, glad to see you, uh, Matthew. It's nice. Uh, and I'm always trying to make the best wax available. So that's what I'm working on doing is making the best wax that I can make. And I always try to prove it. The, the strange thing is that I only make very small changes. So if you look at the basic formulas that I've been using, they don't, really don't vary that much. Very tiny little incremental amounts. So I'm gonna plug in my computer. I didn't want this cord in the way and trip over with hot wax, so that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> That's why I got a lot of gloves on because I have to I have to get the mold out of the oven for one. I always put the mold in the oven when I make cylinders. Oh, our little laboratory crucible there. I know we have to have this fairly, fairly much. Wow, it's still pretty hot yet, and I don't even have the wax plugged in. <laughs> so we're checking the temperature again. At least with this glove, I can get right down in there. But it's actually better to let the, for some odd reason, I probably need to get a new uh, thermal couple for the end. But no, it's actually working pretty good long as I don't touch it. I think when you touch it, it kind of changes it a little bit. But we're getting down there. We're now at 187 degrees. So here, where we need it, 
in a few minutes, then we'll get the mold out of the oven. And yes, I'm going to be using a lot of uh, gloves to get that mold out and some oven mitts. <laughs> Because I'll have to basically grab a really hot mold. Well, the other mitts are gonna that they can go on this hand, I guess. I got a thick. Uh, I got a buckskin glove on the one hand, and uh, and two gloves underneath. <laughs> so I wear like four gloves to not get hopefully not get burned. There's never ever a guarantee that you're not gonna get burned. It, <laughs> this is always dangerous when it comes to you. I'm going to move this table out of the way more because we want to have as much room as possible for a path from the oven to the wax. And I'm going to bring this microphone over here so hopefully you can hear me well. I need to get a new couple of microphone stands. Uh, I'm using an M-Audio uh, producer USB microphone right now. It is a... Uh, Neumann 87 clone. It has the look of the Neumann 87 here. I could kind of show you what it looks like. So that's the microphone I'm using right now. And uh, I just don't have the stand for it right now. I'm probably going to get a shot, another couple more shock mounts and stuff. Uh, I have a nice mixing console and everything in the other room. It's just I didn't want to string as many wires everywhere. So when I'm in the other room, I use, you know, a mixer and a RCA ribbon microphone. But for in here, I'm using this M audio uh, producer. I hope you can hear me just fine. Uh, we'll check the temperature again because we can really lose sight of uh, our temperature. Because we have to take the mold out very quickly. And uh, I don't know if you could see it or not, but we're getting near where we need. Okay, I think it's time to take the mold out. Anything below 180 to 160. So we're good. We're at 180 degrees now. It, it dropped that much. So it's time to get the mold out of the oven. And so put an oven mitt in one hand. And oops, I guess I have to put it in this hand. <laughs> and then I got a buckskin glove and then another glove on this hand. Hopefully I don't get burned. So we have to get the mold out of the oven. So get the mold. Now, I usually have, I forgot about my aluminum pan that I usually have under it, uh, which is kind of essential. So I have no idea where that aluminum pan is. So <laughs> let me put the mold back in the oven. I'll, I'll, I'm going to plug the wax in for a few minutes just so that it doesn't get any colder than it is. It, it won't. It'll heat up nicely anyway. I'm going to put the mold back in the oven for until I find the aluminum pan. I almost forgot about the aluminum pan. Oh, I found the aluminum pan. So we'll just put the mold in the oven for a few minutes. How could I forget my aluminum pan? That's just in case, because we always have to over pour. The, the wax always has to be over poured. You have to always overflow your mold. So I'm just kind of plugging that in for a minute or two. And uh, it's good that we have our, we're gonna, I'm gonna let it, everything kind of set for about five minutes and uh, on mold the blank. I kind of gotta keep a good eye on our temperature. We don't want it to go up too high. Okay, this, this thermometer is really weird because it'll just kind of not look like it's doing anything and all of a sudden it'll jump up to where it goes. Like now it says 107, 108, and then all of a sudden, boom, it starts going up. 130, 40, 50, 60. 76.2, 637. 
We'll get it up to like 181. So we have time to get our mold out. And we're going to do a watch. We're going to watch the mold. We're not. We're going to put a, a timer on for an hour and we'll just note how many minutes it took. It looks like we were at 170. 74. Seventy six. Seven. I like to get to 181 degrees. It should be good at 173. This is a little bit different type of wax. This is more like the original wax, not like a lot of the modern people's wax. It's more the amounts that they had in the original record. So it should work. We just got to watch our temperature. So we're getting the mold out. And luckily, these gloves work perfectly fine. It's in there good and solid. I've got to put an extent. I like to have a good reservoir of wax, so I got my old mold part here. Just put it on top of the mold, and I got good light to see when I'm over the uh, uh, when I'm over the mandrel. I'll bring this down as much as possible there. Good spot to be. And. So we noted that we were 177 degrees. That's what we're molding this at. So this is the fun part. Notice I got gloves on, so I shouldn't get too badly hurt. <laughs> and we're going through filters. Okay, we're a good portion above the mandrel and uh, so I'm gonna remove all the filtering it uh, the filters are good there is actually three real fine filters in this filtering system here and we're above the mandrel that's fine <laughs> didn't hurt anything So you notice we have very fine, uh, that is bronze gauze filters. There's three layers of them. And uh, so I'm going to set this for about 35 minutes. And we're going to watch it and see. Uh, I have ways of checking it. I just got to watch it. So this is pretty exciting because this is a new formula that uh, I read just the different thing about it is it's the Edison formula at number 1046, basically, which is what Edison used for brown wax. The only difference is that it doesn't have sericin in it. Uh, it has uh, beeswax instead. And uh, what we know about beeswax is that we know that Emil Berliner used beeswax to make the, uh, 
his master records. Basically, he had a zinc disc that he coated with beeswax dissolved in petrolized ether, and then he uh, coated the zinc with it. And then the stylus exposed the zinc through the beeswax. And we know that the recorder on the Berliner system was not very good in the first place, not anywhere near the quality that the Edison recording head was, uh, but it still sounded okay for being beeswax. Uh, it, this has a metallic soap, so it doesn't just have the beeswax. So there's enough to have it so it cuts, but it's going to be the same hardness as a standard brown wax record. I've figured that out. And with the uh, annealing of the wax, this wax is what you call annealed. Uh, annealing is uh, when you heat up and cool down, heat up and cool down something. And what it does is it makes the molecular structure better uh, on your brown wax records. Because without uh, the... Uh, annealing process, that's where you get your stars and streaks and the things that look like little snowflakes in your blanks, which you don't want. You don't want a blank with snowflakes or, or dendrites, as I call them. They're like little tendrils. These, they look like, uh, have you ever seen the candles? There's candles that have, looks like little snowflakes in them. They do it as an effect. Like, look, uh, that's fine in a candle, but you don't want that in a cylinder record. That's just not acceptable to have that in a cylinder record. Uh, some things to have around. So we have our mandrel. And we hopefully will put inside so that the record can shrink onto the mandrel to uh, prevent warpage. That's something they did for the gold molded records. But they did not do that for the for the records that were uh, for brown wax blanks. They did that for molded records. They put a mandrel in the middle because uh, they were going to shave off, you know, a brown wax record anyway. So they really weren't that concerned about how eccentric it, what concentric it was at that point. Uh, they were more concerned with uh, molding the blank in the records were almost a quarter inch wax on the original commercial records. Uh, the brown wax records were really, really super thick. In fact, they were first shaved with a, like a carboloid, really not even a sapphire to get them rough shaved. And then they finish them with a sapphire blade, but not the initial, you know, getting the rough casting down. Because all of those Edison blanks had glove marks on them. They, they're they about 2.5 inches in diameter. And all those shavings and all the cutoff ends, they were thrown into the batches. They were recycling that. They were, and all the shavings that came off the blanks, they were recycled as well. That's why most of your commercial cylinders are like a medium brown. I mean, you have some that are less than that. But uh, medium brown is uh, uh, real standard. Kind of like this is like the minimum that most blanks are in brownness. Like this would be considered kind of a light brown. It would be kind of like a light brown cylinder. You like you don't get would not get too many blanks that color. Uh, most of it would be uh, darker than that. Uh, some Columbias are about that color. But I have actually a, I have a cream color concert record, though. I shouldn't say concert. It's a grand record. It's a graphophone cylinder. And it has a home recording on it or a exhibiting recording of a somebody singing uh, Sweet and Low, Sweet and Low, Wind of the Western Sea, Blow that song is on the cylinder and it's a lady singing with a piano and it's it's too bad it, not too bad it, it has a place where it slows down so she sounds like a she sounds like a chipmunk in the middle of the record and then they wind it up and they try it again so they're basically two little one minute recordings on it of them trying to sing barnaby's 
a sweet and low, I think is the name of it. It's an interesting cylinder. Uh, kind of have it put away. I think it's actually up here. The neat color. I mean, it's a fantastic color. Yeah, here it is. I found it. This is a neat color. And this is a home recording. And this is a really neat color for a record, a brown wax record. That's pretty neat. So that's about as light as I've seen a commercial uh, brown wax, pretty much. So this is pretty much the same material that we're making right now, pretty much. But uh, that's just a really neat, yeah, a neat looking record. You can see inside, uh, it looks like uh, on the mold, there was some uh, darker wax. And of course, they weren't cleaning the molds because the hot wax would just melt it. And it melted it slightly and made that kind of orangish look on it in a couple of spots on the outside. It's probably like that from the factory, like that throughout the record. Because there was, you know, some brown, darker brown wax, and they poured a lighter wax into the mold. So they're doing a commercial thing. They're just going in a circle and just molding blanks. So it was a pretty, pretty neat five inch record. <laughs> I was really surprised how they sent this thing that it even arrived. Can you see where there's a line where the two recordings are on it? There's two uh, lines where the recording starts, but that's a pretty neat record. That's a five inch uh, Columbia. And how I know it's a Columbia is because this end was originally rounded over this edge here. And Edison more had an abrupt end. And you can tell that this was originally kind of chamfered. So yeah, that was a, that's a pretty neat um, recording blank. This is an early Columbia box. Notice it has tabs in it. And the bottom is like an Edison or uh, like a regular box like you have on a gold molded record or a, not like the typical uh, this, this actually was not such a good idea though because these mandrels would break uh, during transport later on they actually would uh, um, staple it down with a brass brad staples instead of these tabs because they would break and this is an early columbia box there's the box for the that this came in Again, I'm watching it. We are solid. Uh, I'm going to remove the uh, top here. So you note how... Huh? We've only been five minutes. No, this is the ten minutes in the mold. But I'm going to remove that. That'll help us determine where we're at. The mold temperature was 250 degrees. That's the temperature of the mold. It was 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That was the mold. The mold was brought up to that temperature. That makes it so the wax isn't so... Uh, so we could see how like it has a gelatinous... Uh, at this time. The, this glove configuration will work at this point. 
probably don't want to yet remove the core. We should probably make it about 20 minutes. Now I'm looking for a knife in the, the in this big, Take the wax plug off. Take the plug of wax off. I'm gonna put this over on the stove. So let's see how this comes off. This will tell us what state our wax is in. Uh, it still needs a little time, but it has a nice color. And boy, did it get dark since when I made it. I use these type of gloves at work. These aren't in such good shape anymore. <laughs> but uh, we got to give it a few more minutes. So didn't I say we started at 35 minutes, right? So 10, 11, this is like 12 minutes. If you go too soon, you lose your nice spirals. We don't want to lose our spirals. If you go too late, it, it uh, binds. So that's not good either. <laughs> so I'm looking for our, uh, I'm looking for a knife that I use. Uh, and here's the thing, I just had it just a little bit ago. That's okay. See how it's at the gelatinous stage? See, if you melt an original brown wax material, it'll be like that. It'll have that gelatinous stage. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to Okay, we don't want to, to demold it yet. It's not ready yet. We'll let it lock on to the mold. So we'll, we'll let it be about 20 minutes total. It doesn't have, this is a different process that doesn't take as long. But at least we can see where our wax is at this point. And if you have any air bubbles in your wax, you will see them up here. And you saw we had a big wax plug on there. And that prevented there being air bubbles in the record. See how it's like a noodle at this point? We don't want to demold it yet. See, it's still a noodle. What I did want to do is I did want to make sure that it wasn't binding on the mandrel, and it's not. You can see it's it's still a little too plastic yet to demold. That's what I'm the nice thing at this point I can actually and this is is uh this is slow uh this is much slower at, than the commercial process that they use at the Edison factory. The average time that they actually made the blank, poured it and demolded it originally with a 330 uh, wax temperature, 330 Fahrenheit molding temperature was 15 minutes. Was the original time they were in the mold. So 
So this is 15 minutes, but it's definitely not ready to be mold yet. Yeah, it's it's definitely not not time to demold. And the reason is is because when it when it is ready, it'll kind of unscrew and not fall down to the base. So we're still not ready yet. As I said, this is a new a new wax, so I just have to kind of monitor how long it is by looking at the properties of the wax. And I do know that when this wax does congeal more, it has quite a bit of shrinkage. So I do know that much. As we started the timer at 35 minutes. And 5, 10, 15, 17 minutes have gone by. I think we should give it another 10 minutes, but it's a matter of checking. See, the mandrel is very hot yet. We can almost find out about how hot the mandrel is by using, putting this here. Through there and see what it reads. Or you can kind of see it is pretty darn hot yet it is still about 50 still about 50 degrees yet Yeah. And I still need to give it another 10 minutes at least. Because the idea is I do want some spirals. If you take them out too soon, your spirals are all gloopy looking, and I don't like that. I like, I like where you can actually see the little turns inside the cylinder. If you look at original cylinders, you know, they're kind of messed up on some of them, original ones anyway. In fact, I don't think on that Columbia one, I think that there was some messed up parts that spiral as well. Because it was not really for looks at all. That spiral core had nothing to do with looks. It was a molding. Well, this one actually has a pretty nice well, you can see how it's messed up, like right here. Right there, it's kind of messed up. See, it's kind of thin on that side and thicker on this side. We've had it in for 20 minutes already. Let's check to see. Yeah, we're getting there. I just, as long as your core is, yeah, because it actually, when I was unscrewing it, it was kind of going up. So we still got to give it a little bit more time. And also now it's, it's broke loose in the middle as well. So it's not bound on there.
Thank you, Matthew. I'm, I'm really excited about how this will turn out. This is an experiment. That's what it is. This is still an experiment. We hope just to make the best cylinders out there. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to very carefully remove the core. Very carefully here. I got to put more gloves on. Actually, we're going to wait. Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. We're going to wait for it to be 25 minutes total. When you have the mold hot with a different formula, there's a different formula that uh, you have to be about 70 minutes in the mold. But this one doesn't require 70 minutes. So it's a lot better than, than that. This this will help me unscrew it. So what I'm doing is I'm checking to see how liquid it is. It's still pretty soft yet. So there's no problem letting it sit a little longer. That's what I'm doing is I'm checking the wax properties. Seeing it's still quite plastic yet. And I will have to write down how many minutes this wax uh, takes. We were at, let's see, the molding temperature was 174 C. So I gotta, well, there's the knife I was looking for earlier. I found it. Okay. So, molding temperature was. Also, there's no draft in this room. It's very hot. <laughs> so molding temperature. This is a brand new pen. There we go. Hundred and seventy four degrees centigrade. Uh, mold temp was two hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. And okay, so we're at five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-six minutes. I think we'll leave it for the whole half an hour. Or so yeah, it's still real hot yet.
So it looks like it'll be about 35 minutes that we're going to leave this one in the mold. If I started out a whole day like this, I could actually get a couple castings done in, in the day because the mold isn't going to take that long the second time to heat up. After you, you've uh, got the cylinder out, you can put it in there for another half an hour. Which technically, if I use two molds, I had two molds going, I could make a half a dozen blanks in a day. If I had a whole day where I wasn't disturbed, I could make about half a dozen blanks from wax. At least we know that it's not bound on the mandrel. That's the new thing. Our first one might not have the best spirals in the world, but as I said, the original blanks that was the, the idea of it is to increase the time that it can be in the mold and increase the window of opportunity. Believe it or not, with a smooth bore mold, you have maybe a minute of grace at the most. With a spiral core, it gives you five five minutes maybe of grace period from so basically five times uh, win, uh, five times the window that a smooth bore mold has. And that is why the early molds had a spiral core it is because it increased the window of opportunity to remove the core. Believe me, I've seen uh, smooth bore cores and uh, you have to get those things right out. And also the way smooth bore uh, mold is, another bad problem with it is you have to kind of distort the middle of the record to get it out. I can also put stress on it where it'll actually fracture the middle of the blank. Like not this way, but there'll be a form a concentric ring in the record that will, because it would hold it somehow, taking out the, uh, the uh, smooth board. So there's a lot of disadvantage to smooth bore molds. So there's a lot of technical reasons why there is a spiral core. And uh, well, this is a lecture and, you know, I would like it if uh, other phonograph people but I, or just curious musicians more than anything, because I think musicians more appreciate this than many collectors do. There are a few collectors who really like this. And there's there's some that are quite jealous of all the, you know, like, oh, well, he's got an original studio recorder. Well, why don't I have one of those? You know, I need one for my collection. He's not going to sell it. You know, that's more on their mind. It's like, uh, you know, I want to put that in my case and look at it. A run of studio recorders and people can buy them. That would be very expensive because then it'd make competition. But I could, if somebody really, really wanted one, you know, make it like maybe $1,500 or something like that. So if you really want one, I, you can have it, but it's going to be expensive. Not the original one. I won't sell it, but I'd sell copies of it. I'm actually thinking about making a set of about 15 of them. 
all equipped with different cutters and diaphragms and suspension systems and all kinds of stuff like that. It just takes time and money. And working at a regular job 50 to 58 hours a week is doesn't leave that much time for free time. So if you notice, I'm on here really late at night, so I don't really get that much sleep. My average sleep is about four hours a day. That's about it. Because you got to pack it in to do your work. You got to have work and fun time and all that and figure out how to do it. By the way, if you like these things, if you like magnets and, and that, uh, I got these from Larry Levitz. Uh, he uh, makes these. He makes all kinds of neat. These are basically car magnets. There's the Columbia Phonograph Company. We got Nipper Dog, and these are dealer signs. Edison Gold Molded. Those all came from Larry Levitz. So. If you would like those, he also makes t-shirts too. I have some Larry Levitt's t-shirts. And uh, so your t-shirt and, and magnet needs, go to Larry Levitt's. Give, you a little, uh, give him a little plug here as a kind of a sponsor for this. So hopefully Larry likes that and gets some business. So if you notice that we're gonna go the whole time, I'm checking the, yeah, we're just about where we need to be. In fact, I'm gonna give it five more minutes, which will make it 40 minutes total time in the mold. I'm, I'm, I gotta check to make sure that it, okay. You got to check when you're trying a new formula, you don't want it to bind. And of course, the more blanks you make, the more you can custom tailor. It. I'm using a timer. That's kind of scary in a way. So if I add five more minutes, it'll be 40 minutes for all this that we're doing. But it's always, you write down your mold, molding temperature, which is 174 degrees centigrade, that's the, the wax temperature. And the mold was at 250 degrees. If you uh, put your mold in and start your wax, you basically will, it'll even out where your wax is up to temperature and your mold is ready. Okay, this is going to buzz and I'm going to give it five more minutes, which will make it 40 total minutes. Okay, so I'll give it five more minutes. Now, I don't really expect a perfect spiral in the core at this point. We just want a record that we can test that we can make an adjustment next time we mold the record. It's nice and warm in this room. You want your room around 90 degrees to mold cylinders. Sounds crazy. If it's uncomfortable, if you ever look, there's a picture of the molding at the Edison plant in 1900. If you look at that picture, uh, you'll notice that they kind of have their, uh, they have their wool pants on, but they're in their, uh, they're in their cotton shirts. They don't have their vests and everything on. They're in their cotton shirts and they're, uh, or, you know, it must be very hot in there. And the, the reason is, is because records mold best when the air temperature in the room is about 90 degrees. Now, if you go 100 degrees, you know, like 105 or something like that, then it won't even, the old record won't come out of the mold. They'll just sit there and look at you. It, it'll be hard and retain its shape, but it won't come out of the mold. It'll just stay in the tube. And the outer tube will just stay in there and not shrink. So that's why you don't want it too hot either. And too cold, of course, you get a draft and it cracks the record or makes one side cooler than the other and all kinds of stuff. You can't have that. 
No, they probably had him, in, in, you know, yeah, it probably most likely was something that was common in the factory because you had to make production. Our wax itself in the thing is congealing. Every time I heat this and cool it, it'll make the wax darker. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how many cylinders we got out of this batch. It looks like about four or five cylinders, maybe a half a dozen. Because we also got to consider that we'll put the, we'll be using the trimmed ends. And when I process the cylinder on the shaving machines and everything tomorrow or whenever I feel like doing that, I have to totally uh, clean all the surfaces in the bag so that I don't get cross contamination from another kind of wax. Have you ever seen the difference between beeswax and Saracen wax? Well, I could go do that while we're waiting. No, you know, we got enough. We don't have enough time to do that. We're gonna demold it pretty soon. Yeah, there we go. That's more like. There's I'm taking a uh, today is, so you have the wax, wax back to make eight and nine. Oh, that's when I came up with the formula. Wow, isn't it something how long it is before I actually try something? I'm trying to think what today is. Today's the 25th, isn't it? Eight, 25. Twenty twenty one. And then usually these notes I'll put in the computer also. Let's make it forty five minutes in the mold. Okay, let's see how the spirals are. I'll put another glove on this hand. That said, it's not so bad with the spiral core as far as molding time. Back. Should be able to put this. Well, I'm not ready to lift it off just yet. There we go. I should be able to lift this out. It doesn't have much for spiral, but it will when it dries. It actually does have a bit of a. I gotta take this little washer off. So there it is, and it does have somewhat of a spiral core in it, not much. So it looks like we can do an hour would actually be better, an hour in the mold. So what we do, we put that in there very carefully. Good. See, as long as... See, there's some spiral in there. It's not, not real 
prominent, but it's in there. If you'll notice that some cylinders are like that. If you look at original ones, it's a bit on the glove, it won't hurt it. I'm gonna take this off. This can go down here. We'll just set that there. And we'll check it in a while. We're gonna give it about 20 minutes. Sometimes this will actually fall off of it. What this will do, we also got to check to make sure it doesn't bind on there. But there it is. It looks like it's a successful casting. I don't see at this point any dendrites or stars and streaks, but we won't know that until it actually comes out of the mold, what it is. But you can watch it if you want. Um, you can watch and see what happens. We're, it's taken an hour and two minutes, basically, for the whole molding process. Or for this video, at least. We're going to take a congealing point. That's what this wax here is congealed. See, it's got skin forming on top and it's liquid. So we're going to write down a congealing point of this wax, which is right now it's called the congealing point of the batch. So we're taking the congealing point of the wax. Congealing point means the point at when the skin forms on the top. It's liquid underneath. Remember this thing stops at the air congealing point. So it looks like it was 72.8 degrees. 72 is our 0.8 degrees centigrade is our congealing point.
I'll be back. I'm going to check in a few minutes when the, when I hear the buzzer go off. So here, just kind of, I know it's kind of boring to watch. Uh, see, this is how I like the spirals to look, but yeah, we'll have to figure out how, it looks like it'll be an hour, will be the normal time that we'll leave the wax in the mold for this particular type of wax. See, this, this particular cylinder, see how nice the spirals are in it? That's how I like my spirals to look. So we got to figure out how long it takes where you can leave it in there and the record has nice spirals. The nice thing is that not very much wax uh, stuck to the core. That's good. And didn't stick to it. I'm going to clean it off with a little bit of, of you know, these are cheap. <laughs> um, And there, see if there's any, there, there's a little bit of wax stuck in the spirals. So yeah, it looks like an hour in the mold would be really good. But for everything that we're doing, an hour would actually, will work. And we should actually have some okay spirals with an hour sitting in the mold. Yes, this mold core, the mold core get also the way it is, it retains heat for a long time so that it doesn't get as cool either. I'm just kind of wiping off this core. This is a really good smelling wax. I love the smell of it. If you can combine. Beeswax and Crayola crayons, that's what it smells like. If you can kind of put those two smells in your mind together, pretty aromatic smell. Easier if I put it on the base. <laughs> this mold is still really hot to handle. So yeah, it looks like next time I mold this formula, the next cylinder will give it a whole hour. We did 45 minutes, so a whole hour in the mold will be good. It'll make the spiral better and it shouldn't bind on the... You can see how a spiral core increases your your chance of getting a better blank out of it. One day I tried though not preheating the blank mold the mold just to see what it would do and, and without being preheated the the first cylinder we I actually when the radio we did a radio I did a thing for uh, the world and everything in it, a broadcast for them. So the first time, I was kind of in a hurry, so I tried to mold a cylinder without heating the mold up, which is kind of a silly idea. But it actually was helpful because we just did something else. So, so when that cylinder was done, you know, it, it bound on the core and, you know, it was a good learning experience for the interviewer and me. I was like, well, this one didn't turn out. But I'll show you that this will. So what I did is I put the mold in for half an hour. And then I poured the wax in. And uh, we set the timer. And we went and talked about other things. And then when the buzzer went off, we demolded it. And it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. So... It's very, to me, it's very important to pre have a preheated mold. So the mold is pretty much ready for the next time I make a cylinder. Core is all clean for the next cylinder. I
I don't know what time it is, but. Oh, I want to make sure this thing doesn't bind on me. In fact, taking that off, it shrank a little bit, which is good. Hello, who do we have watching now? Are you still there, Matthew? Is that you? It says there's uh, one person watching. Okay. I have to clean up a little mess here. <laughs> Buy some more chemical gloves. I use chemical gloves for uh, when I make hydrated aluminum. My hands are pretty tough hands, I think. What I used for a reservoir was my early mold, my first mold. So this is the, the outer casing of my first mold. And uh, it didn't really make always the thickest blinks because you had to shave when the time you shaved it down. They were almost around the 2.150 range or 2.160, which doesn't have as many shaves as, as these blinks. This, this mold, right now, the record is the inner diameter of the mold itself is 2.4 inches. And a finished normal blank is 2.150 to 2.180 is the normal range that the Edison phonograph will take a blank up to about. You can actually squeeze one on about 2.195, but you're pushing it on some people's machines. Their reproducer might, every machine, the linkage is a little different on it on a, like a C model C reproducer or an automatic every linkage but you don't know if somebody has a reproduction linkage or you know somebody made a different linkage or if it's an original linkage so it's best to make cylinders for the average consumer about uh no thicker than 2.175 and also make sure that you tell people use caution and check with your reproducer recorder that you have enough clearance so it can, you know, go up and down with any variations in the blank. What I'll do is I'll, tomorrow I'll show you how the blank actually turns out. I think this buzzes. I don't think, it, I think it'll still be, you know, quite, in the mold yet the outer casing oh yes you can force that outer casing off but i don't that's not the way i do it that's how they originally did it they originally first took the outer part of the tube off when the wax was semi you know semi liquid yet and they in the court testimony they asked what consistency was the wax they said like a putty well I kind of showed you that gelatinous putty stage. That's when they originally removed the blanks out of the molds, but they removed the outside of this part first. And so most makers today do the opposite way. They, they remove the core first, and then they let the uh, tube shrink. The cylinder will shrink in the tube. And it's a warm day, so it's going to take longer for it to shrink. We have five more minutes, and it probably won't shrink in that amount of time. Uh, tomorrow, I'll probably mold another blank.
and hopefully the spiral will come out. There's nothing wrong. This does have a spiral in there, but it's not really... The spiral isn't an important to how it fits on your phonograph. I just have a personal liking to have it really nice, but sometimes you don't get that lucky all the time. And this is our first time with this particular formula, so it's a matter of the fact that it even worked as good as it did. It makes me happy. It's still quite expanded in there. I didn't go very hard because I don't want to damage anything. But it looks like it's going to be a good casting. But this helps ensure that the uh, blank doesn't warp inside. Looks like I will have to make something to eat soon. <laughs> I'm hungry. To the average person, this might be very boring, but for a conservator or somebody who uh, has an interest in cylinder records, the technical side, this is there's no place else where you can see this being done. I have, I don't know how many videos of me making different blanks the chronology the chronicles that i do this type of work and also makes it so that people can't say well sean Bory doesn't exist there's actually people who say that that uh, i'm kind of a figment of people's imagination <laughs> you know it's kind of a nothing to see here go move on there's nobody that the guy doesn't exist you, nope don't ask about him there, there are people in the collector community who like that. I'm like, oh, no, no. But the, it's like uh, uh, they pulled the fact that I, you know, ha I used the name North American Phonograph Company. They pulled that from Wikipedia, and I'm sure it was some collector who's like, uh, no, we can't say that. Can't say that. Nope. And uh, I don't know. It sounds like some fun sleuthy detective work to find out who did that. So you go look at ISPs and people who edit things and read the notes that people say. Figure out then who they are because they like to hide behind an you know anonymity and figure out who they are. If you, you I wonder how many of you are aware that if you go to the Edison laboratory in west orange new jersey and go up to the music room there are in the hallway to the music room there is uh two phonographs one is from 1887 it has a kind of a skeletal top and then the motor is exposed underneath uh it's on like a wooden breadboard and uh the mandrel has a drive on it there's like on this end of the mandrel there's a little bevel and i'm not sure if it's rubber or or leather on there then the motor is like this and turns and then the it turns the mandrel like that motor spins there's i don't know how what kind of governor it has on it. the governor is part of the motor the governor is part of the motor but that was like an early it's got a spectacle uh carriage on it but uh it's run by fric a friction system kind of like a rim drive on a turntable it works just like that that was the very first uh of the wax cylinder player recorders was that one and then there's another one 
that looks similar to a class M per, or a perfected phonograph, but it's smaller and it's primarily brass and it's got the spectacle on it. Uh, it has a case, but it's not like the later class M case or the class S style perfected phonograph of, of late 1888, early 1889. It's not exactly like that. It's not exactly like the one that Edison is, you know, slumped over the chair. It's a model before that. So before that 1888 photo of Edison on June 16th, there was two other wax cylinder phonographs before that, two other different designs. Uh, I think they both have rim drives. They don't have belts. I didn't, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the picture uh, to see if it has a belt or not. The uh, 1888, early 1888 one. But uh, I made some uh, of the non-metallic soap, uh, what's called yellow paraffin cylinders, which are not. They're principally uh, stearic acid, uh, saracen, beeswax, and carnauba wax. There's carnauba wax in them. I actually have some of the wax left over, and I, I have enough to make one blank from that batch. And then I'll make a blank for myself because I don't have one. I mean, I can always make the batch again, but this is the actual batch that I used to create the six cylinders for that are on that were for the display of the 1887 and 1888 Edison pre perfected phonographs. So I made those in 2010. But I have a notebook around here that actually has the a copy of the, you know, a weighted copy of the check to prove it. And I have to have all this stuff if I ever take people to court that I did these things. That's one thing people don't count on is that you have records of things and pictures and photographs and, and that. There we go. Actually, that talking did good. See, there it is. Very nice. If you notice on my cylinders, there is a uh, um, spiral on the outside as well. And it helps the wax go in the mold evenly. So let's make sure we can get this off of here. There we go. So there it is. There's our rough casting. And there it is. It's good casting. And you could kind of see a little bit of the spiral inside. It's not very good. But that's not what the main thing is to check the quality of the wax itself. So this will set here. Until tomorrow, I'm going to put this down so that it doesn't knock the cylinder over and break it. <laughs> and this too. This can go on the mold. Don't want anything on here. That. I probably should move this somewhere else. I put it over on the shaver. But that is our broadcast for today. It looks like a good successful casting. The spirals aren't very nice, but it has some in it. I know that doesn't really matter to anybody, but I don't, I like nice spirals. So the next time I cast it, cast this formula, look at the color. It is kind of a neat color. Let's take a look at this color. It's kind of a medium brown. Looks like there's no dendrites or anything. There's a There's a little bit, you can kind of see the spiral inside of it a little bit. But it's not sticking out. It's just like in the, in there, but not very good. But that's not that important. It's still a good functioning blank. That's what the main thing is. We'll get to test out. Again, this is how I get my, uh, this is steric acid when it comes in. So this is the bag that steric acid comes in. Well, that's 50 pounds it was. There's still about maybe 50 pounds in there. There's a couple more, a couple batches. Have you ever seen steric acid? So this is what steric acid looks like before it's melted. It smells like Crayola crayons. Good way to describe it. But this is what steric acid looks like.
before it's melted or made of cylinders or anything. It's kind of flaky and waxy. It kind of sticks together when you squish it in your hands a little bit. It squishes together in your hand. Okay, so that's our broadcast for today. Thank you for watching here at the North American Photograph Company. We are signing off.